Basketball season begins tonight for the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. The 2015-2016 team, it's filled with plenty of athleticism. And tonight, they host sister school, Rutgers Newark, inside the Lewis Brown Athletic Center. Well, thank you for joining us for some Big Ten hoops on BTN Plus with the Hall of Fame coach, Dick Lloyd. I'm Kevin Fitzgerald. We've heard Eddie Jordan talk about it so much over the last couple months. Revitalized offense. He's got plenty of new faces to work into the rotation this year. Well, he's got a very interesting combination of faces. He's got two freshmen, true freshmen. He's got two redshirt freshmen. He's got a five-year a graduate student who transferred here from Bradley. He's got a junior college player among that seven. And then he's got his transfer student who will not be able to play, but he's from Kansas State. Interesting combination. And you just saw the heralded freshman, Corey Sanders. He's on the bench. Out for today's game. He's ineligible. Rutgers Newark in the black uniforms with a tip-off. And a foul right out of the gate. And the Scarlet Knights, they wear the home whites. Well, that's the big story. Corey Sanders, everybody wants to see him play. He's a top 100 recruit, a, a big get for Eddie Jordan and his staff. Ineligible for just today's game. He played in an unsanctioned summer tournament just a few months ago. So he'll be back on Sunday when the team takes on Howard. But today, fans just have to wait one more game to catch him. And so will we. <laughs> At the top of the key, there's Bishop Daniels. The starting unit for the Knights includes Mike Williams, DJ Foreman, Greg Lewis, and then Jonathan Laurent. We talked about Laurent a moment ago. He is a lanky 
freshman that Jordan and the coaching staff very high on. He wears number four in white. He can shoot from the outside. He can also drive to the basket. He and Sanders headlined that 2015 class. High off the glass. That shot from Jon Snow, no good. And here is Laurent. Looks like he got away that time. Looked like he may have been walking. Yeah. You can imagine the nerves from a guy, a true freshman like that, big game, and he gets his chance to start. And as you say, coach is extremely high on him. Probably one of the most athletic guys playing that position we've had for a while. And, of course, as you said, Eddie Jordan wants to play up-tempo, and they're certainly doing that so far, pushing the ball up. They've got the three. He says, take it. Even there's 20 seconds on the clock. And Lorenz going to let it go. Too strong in the rebound down to David Azora. Well, here's the rest of the unit for Rutgers Newark. Out there with Azora, Jordan McDaniel, Vic Singh, Tyler Ofri. His first shot altered. And John Snow, John Lockridge, he's in his 15th season as head coach of the Scarlet Raiders. He loves John Snow. Didn't have him all of last season. Now he's back after a thumb injury, sidelined him all of last year. And he's matched up against Mike Williams, probably the best perimeter defender for Rutgers. Well, a couple threes early on, you said it. The Knights are going to try to trigger from deep plenty of times this year. That one off the mark. There's DJ Foreman. He's matched up with the big guy, David Azoro. Tell you, the Scarlet Raiders from Rutgers Newark uh, really trying to penetrate every time down. And they look like they're trying to push it too. So it's going to be a really high tempo game. They're getting in the paint, but Lewis and Foreman doing a good job of intimidating inside. From the right wing, Ofri's shot no go. And there's Mike Williams with the rebound. Oh, Rutgers Newark, they're a Division Three team. Now for them, this is just an exhibition game. Won't count towards the record for the Knights. This is their home opener. This is the season opener. And Daniels, we know he loves to drive to the rim. Foul just before the shot. He's one of the best at that, too. I'll tell you what, when you come to practice and you see he and Mike Williams going at it, guarding each other, they both are great penetrators. I haven't seen anybody, though, as good as Bishop Daniels for a while. He really gets to the hole. Has to make some better decisions, and that's what the year of maturity now. Uh, having one year under his belt, I think, is going to help him. Eight and a half points a game last year. He's the team's leading returning score. Laurent, he stepped on the end line. And ball goes back to the Raiders. And here's Rutgers pressing now right away. They, we're not going to see them press the entire game, but Eddie does want to work and be up-tempo on the defensive game. He's going to press some full court, some half court. And there's the turnover. Foreman. And there's the first bucket of the season. Well, that makes the coaches feel great, I'm sure, because they're all over now using that first one to get some intensity there and had the ball trapped in the corner again. <laughs> you can see the reaction on the late whistle from Foreman. Well, his first hammer of the year. Foreman, he's the sophomore from Spring Valley, New York. And the substitution. Foreman comes out of the game for Ibrahima Jallo. We should also mention Deshaun Freeman, who's being disciplined for violating team rules, going to sit out the first half. He's the Herald of Junior College transfer, and Snow finishes hanging in the air. And again, that was on a drive, so the Raiders doing a good job of penetrating that defense. Well, they like a lot of movement on their offensive end, so... Here's our first good look at this revitalized offense. What's new about it from Eddie Jordan's group in 2015-16? I think they're going to get the shot up much quicker as they did there. Of course, we will be talking about some of the rule changes, and that's one of the big, I think there were 25 different rule changes. You know what happens when you have a committee? They've got to do something. <laughs> and so they were concerned about the game being too slow, not enough offense, so they took five seconds off the clock, and it's a 30-second clock now. 35 to 30. And it means more possessions. That means more points. That looks like an offensive foul. We've heard the whistle a bunch in the first few minutes. And you can also see in the paint, black line right around the original three foot. 
arc line, and it's moved from three to now four feet in the college game. Yep, and that's a secondary defender. Can't be in there, and if he has contact, the foul's on him. Laurent matched up with Singh. Now he throws it away. Williams starts the break. Daniels goes strong, swatted away. Second chance, no go, and the block for Jordan McDaniel. I tell you, Daniels didn't waste any time, got his own rebound, put it right back up again. The defense this year, it's got a little extra click to it. We'll see a lot of traps. McDaniel can't finish, and Williams to bring it up. Well, that's been the problem right now for the Raiders. They are getting in, just can't finish. Lead feed, good look. And Jallo has his first two. Jallo's big guy, very athletic, but 6'10 guy can get up and down the floor, and he did that time, resulted in a bucket for him. Well, as head coach Jordan said, he's a great post-up option. We've got to get him the ball in that post-up position. There's a three, and it's good. McDaniel. He's their leading returning scorer, 16 points a game. Also leading returning rebounder. That doesn't count Snow, who didn't play last year. But two years ago, he averaged 16 also. A Raiders team that lost a good chunk of players from last year. Laurent, offensive foul. Yeah, I think Jonathan just a little too intense there. Put his head down. you got to go around the defender, not through him. One-point cushion for the Scarlet Raiders. We'll take a timeout. Back in a moment. Back inside the Rutgers Athletic Center this evening. Opener for the season. Rutgers coming against its sister school from up north in Newark, along with Dick Lloyd. Kevin Fitzgerald with you this evening. Now Scarlet Knights on a 15-game losing streak. Finished last year 10 and 22. Just had a couple of Big Ten wins, but a couple of key players from last year's squad, Miles Mack, Kadeem Jack, they're now gone. Both graduated. Also have to remember a junior E2. He's also transferred to Tulsa after a couple years with the Scarlet Knights, but it's enabled a chance now for different players, some transfers, some freshmen to step right in. And it's really reshaped this team. We'll go down to the sideline with Ryan Farrell. Terry Appreciation Night here at the Rack with the first 500 fans in attendance receiving this camouflage Rockers hat. I had a chance to speak with head coach Eddie Jordan before the game, and he said in the absence of Corey Sanders, they will definitely look to push the offense with Mike Williams. He also mentioned that they are a completely different team than last season. They also said that with the players this year, they he described them as unselfish, but he also said they always do what it takes to find the open man and get the open shot. Back to you, Kevin. Yeah, Ryan, it's really about motion this season. We know Eddie Jordan, he brought that Princeton-style offense a couple of years ago, has retooled it a bit. There's a foul on the drive to the lane. Well, he also, Daniel has two. He also talked about the three-point shooting, and I, I see that uh, Good is in there. He's one of the red-shirt freshmen. And boy, can that kid shoot. They've been high on his game because of his basketball IQ. He's not going to force anything. And they've started out 0 for 4. Last year, I think they shot almost 29% from three-point range. So if that's going to be part of their offense, they got to step that up a little bit. And that's what Justin Good is in there for. Have Good. We saw Jallo come in previously. How deep can this team go 
on the bench this year? Well, I think I'll go very deep, talking about nine or ten at least. Lewis whistled for the offensive foul. And there's a look at Omari Greer, fifth-year senior from Bradley. Before he could even toss that entry pass in, that's the first foul on Lewis. That's interesting how you can get that extra year that I think it's been about four or five years now that if you have finished your degree, you can transfer to another school and play immediately. And Greer is from South Jersey. He had that one year of eligibility left. Good hands, that one out of bounds. Jallo got a piece. But the Raiders from Newark continuing to try and penetrate, and they're getting in the paint a little bit too easily. Rutgers man-to-man -man defense now and have been, we saw a little pressing, I'm sure we're gonna see more of it. Well, they start four seniors in their starting unit. And there's a hook on Laurent. The officials are gonna call that tagging or the hands, that's the other thing the people with the rules wanted to do was to clean it up a little bit, allow more player movement. So Laurent with a quick two fouls early in this game, already one and one. Not even through the first six minutes of this one. And that was introduced a couple of years ago, the freedom of movement. You've got to allow either the ball handler or the cutter especially the chance to get through the lane. Yeah, defenders were blocking, stepping in the path. He can't do that or the foul's going to be on you. And the Raiders touched it last. So the Knights get it back. Snow guessed wrong on that one. Thought it was going to be the... Raiders ball. Boy, John Snow is a competitor. His coach, Joe Lochran, said he's probably the best cutter I've ever coached. And you just saw him there. He's rewarded cutting to the lane, got fouled. And there's a whistle away from the ball. Our officiating crew today, Donnie Olson. There's Kevin O'Connell. Josh White as well rounds out the crew. And Daniels resets the offense. He's the fifth-year senior from Raleigh, North Carolina. A little too far for Jallo, and now Snow starts the break. Man, finishes. Where'd he find that one? That was a pretty tough shot. Kept his balance. Well, John Snow is the premier offensive weapon to watch out for. Mentioned he missed all of last year, two seasons ago. Average close to 17 a game. Greer, too strong. The offensive board for Daniels, and he finishes on the baseline. That should be a plus for Rutgers, a little bigger team. They ought to be able to get the second and third opportunities if they're not going to hit their shots. Tallest player in Newark's starting lineup is David Azaro. He's just 6'5". McDaniel, and he cans a three. Tell you what, they're not afraid to take him from the outside. Interesting aside, uh, Jordan's dad, John McDaniel, played at Rutgers for four years. And his son, an all-conference first-teamer at the New Jersey Athletic Conference. That was a nice move. That goes back to the old Princeton offense. Anytime anybody makes a back door, you think Princeton offense, but it was a nice cut. The pass was not so good, got deflected, but it was a great cut by Bishop Daniels. Now the oldest play in the, in the book. Yeah. Good working the baseline. He's number 10 in white. You pointed him out. They can't get the ball to him. Snow on the run again. Laurent finds Jallo. Now, it's a three-point game. That wasn't a case of Jalla running the floor as much as it was not getting back on defense and was there to uh, at least get two points. Well, that's something Eddie Jordan talked a lot about was we've got to pick up the pace a bit on the offensive end. Maybe it was a bit too half-court last season. This year they're going to try to run a bit more. Now start to the defensive side to try to create those breaks. McDaniel has a quick eight points. Well, he did a good job of getting in the paint. Very nice floater shot. Very difficult shot. And this is a Division Three program. No slouch by any means. Greer, nice athletic play. Use the body there. Yeah, they picked up the pace there. Just a little dribble handoff. You see that dribble handoff a lot. 
That makes the defenders have to communicate and make some decisions when you interchange like that. Mazzaro, big guy, out beyond the three-point line. And there's a reach. Ofray, he'll have a pair of free throws, or a one and one rather, when we come back. Right. Season opener inside the rack for the Scarlet Knights. Now second season in the Big Ten Conference here with Dick Lloyd. There's one of the new faces in 2015-2016, Omari Greer. He's the fifth-year senior from Bradley. Bishop Daniels is back as well. What do you like about the influx of talent this season and how they're going to mesh together on the offensive end? Well, I like the way that they are shooting much better and we watched a couple games in practice some of these guys that came in are pretty good shooters and that's what Rutgers needs right now they're 0 for 4 from three point range they're shooting 42 percent overall but they're out rebounding the Raiders 10 to 4 that's where they should have the edge here since Rutgers is so much bigger and has more size but look at the turnovers six turnovers it's not a good sign especially since Rutgers wants to press and get the other team to turn it over. The Raiders only have two. And the Raiders have taken the rock right to the rim early in this game. Here's Good, great shooter. Williams, the sophomore. These are two deadly outside weapons. Williams spots up. Too strong, but there's the rebound. Long shots, long rebounds, and it looked like that time that the uh, Raiders were in his own defense, hustling pretty well. All right, Coach, he calls it just the half-court man. We won't press too much. Now eight on the shot clock. Laurent, that's a three, and there's the first. Didn't hesitate, nice ball movement, shared it a little bit. Everybody got to touch the ball before it went up. It's guys like Laurent and Good and Williams who are going to be the outside threats. McDaniel hanging in the air. That's a pretty look at Jay. Well, he had Good on him, decided to take advantage of. He said, I haven't seen a good shooter who can play defense. So he's challenging Good a little bit here. Well, Goody spent a half a year Hargrove Military Academy. Grew up in Roanoke, Virginia. Actually enrolled early, just before the calendar flipped to 2015. So he was able to get his foot in the door here quickly. Spent the spring semester. 
he and Foreman were teammates there, and of course, Goode was a PG. He already had his high school degree, so no sense staying there. He came to Rutgers and got that great semester in of practicing with the team. And Jordan said, you gotta watch out. He's physical. He may not look it, but he's more athletic than you might imagine. Cut to the rim, and Williams, he finishes. Boy, was that very nice. The defender turns his head, makes a cut right to the basket, and the guy with the ball saw him. Very nicely done. Well, there's the motion offense. It's learning to move without the basketball. More important than the guy that has the ball is the guy without the ball, making sure he's getting good cuts. That's Tariq Baker into the game for the Raiders. And McDaniels right now, he's a tough man to stop on the interior. A little bit too much penetration now being allowed into the paint. Well, Jordan McDaniel, as coach calls him, he's really a stretch four. We're going to play him at the four most of the season. Really should be out on the wing, and you can see why the versatility. Greer runs right into Azaro. And Lorenz has another offensive foul. Yeah, he just, again, put his head down. He's got to control, let the game come to him just a little bit. Put his head down and tried to go in. And the uh, defender from Rutgers Newark did a great job, the secondary defender, of stepping in, and he was outside the arc. Yeah, credit Vic Singh. Well, that's three on Laurent, so he comes out. And back in comes DJ Foreman. Foreman, another guy, he'll be asked to log a good amount of minutes down in the post. Eddie Jordan, he wants to go with a couple forwards in that rotation. Rutgers now giving some zone, uh, showing some zone defense, a 2-3. That's one way to try to nullify McDaniel. That one, top of the backboard, so a ball back to the Knights. You know all about that 2-3 from Syracuse. <laughs> It's amazing what he has done with that defense. Not, not used to anything else but no. the 2-3 zone no. up there. And very effective. <laughs> well, it's also a debate that's been brought up this year as well. Are more teams going to go to the 2-3 zone? You talked about it, a 30-second shot clock. That just means less time for a defensive unit to work. Yep, and if they press it a little bit and let them take up about eight seconds to get the ball or nine seconds to get it up, don't have a whole lot of time to work for a good shot. Good defensive pressure from Baker, who just checked in. He's a freshman from St. Anthony's, one of the more powerful programs in all of New Jersey. And Good and Greer, they thought that one was tipped, but to no avail, ball back to the Raiders. He had a four-point edge. We're coming up on the eight-minute mark. This Raiders team, they won 19 games a year ago. They've had winning seasons since 2007. That's eight in a row consecutively. Division three program, but always a very competitive program. And we flash it up earlier. First time in a while these two teams has played as Foreman finishes. Nice move, too. That was a back-to-basket move. Took his time and finished it. Timeout taken on the floor. DJ Foreman showing the dexterity. And Rutgers trying to get back in this one.
Good shot of the Scarlet Knights and their third year head coach, Eddie Jordan, 30 years of coaching experience. Scarlet Raiders visiting for the first time since the 1950s. We talked about Corey Sanders before. He's ineligible just for the first game of the season. Also, one big man missing, Shaq Dorson. Good forward off the bench. Last year's squad, he's got a left foot injury. He's out indefinitely. Certainly hurts the post a bit, but that's a position that's got some good depth this year for the team. Well, Corey Sanders is the guy I think everybody's waiting to see. Again, watch him in practice. He's done a very good job of not trying to dominate, to let the game come to him, not trying to force a lot of things. And a couple times I've seen him, he looks like a pretty good shooter too. And Rutgers right now, one for six from three-point range. And Coach Jordan has said, I want that three-point shot to be part of our new offense. And there was a great move by Mike Williams. Nice backdoor cut. At least on that a couple times. But it was well defended by uh, the Raiders. Man-to-man -man pressure for the Knights. Season opener tonight. Home on Sunday against Howard. Azzaro stepped out of bounds, and Jallo, he's that big body. He's making it tough for him to get to the rim. Yeah, he's a big guy, uses the body well. Got to work a little bit on his back-to-basket moves, but pretty athletic, and as we say, runs the floor very well for a big guy. Here's the last look at Williams' motion. Well, he just had a hand there from Azzaro. Mike Williams. He's made a transformation from freshman year to sophomore year. Shot just 24% from downtown last season. And when he came out of high school, he was one of the better shooters in all of New York City. He said to his coach in the offseason, look, it was just jitters. I'm ready to go this year. And that's what Coach Jordan thinks it was. And the coach have told me they've seen far more practice than I have that he's shooting very well, and they're really excited about that. Williams, he's at that ideal weight as well. There's a foul on the ball. Thought he put a little too much muscle on heading into his freshman year. Oh, good. We haven't seen him dial one up yet. No, he, as I say, he's got a pretty good basketball IQ. You're not going to find him forcing a lot. Shot what, 94% I think in high school. Boy, senior season. There it goes. High school down in Roanoke, Virginia. Sometimes you jinx a guy by <laughs> mentioning that, but we're not jinxing him, oh. even though it is Friday the 13th. Hey, the odds are in your favor, 94%. <laughs> I would say so. I, in fact, I don't think he hit rim on either one of those shots. Now Rutgers got a chance to press. Foreman, he's got the size right at the top of that press. Tyler Ofray, the Newark, New Jersey native, to the corner, seeing in and out. Well, no one boxed out the man underneath. No, nah, they can't do that. That was too easy. Looked like Thomas at 6-4. The ball just fell to him. Rutgers had a pretty good trap, but Raiders were able to dribble out of it. you got to shut the sideline off, force him in the middle. Hard finish. Jallo, he's got a half a dozen. Well, that was a nice move by the big guy facing the basket. Jallo, 6-10. He's 240. He's from Senegal. Rutgers back to the man-to-man. -man. They did show zone on a couple of times down. And there's the offensive foul. That's a whistle we're going to see a lot throughout college basketball, the 15-16 season. If you're a ball screener, you've got to allow that defender the chance to move before you set the screen. And That's that blind pick. Yep, they set it on good, and they didn't have his feet set. Good call by the official. Knights down a point. Rutgers Newark, very conditioned. And their head coach said, well, we scrimmaged a D2 school a couple days ago. Looked good then. They forget about Jallo here. That was nicely done. Jallo set the screen. He rolled to the bucket. He was wide open. And Bishop did a good job of getting the ball to him. But nice pick and roll. Jallo, one of the best. Prospects coming out of North Carolina in the class of 2014, redshirted last year. Long three, and Snow with the fist pump. You got to know, the scouting report tells him that Snow likes the three-point shot, is very effective with it, and you got to get out and play him. He's one for two from three-point right now, but 
That was an unmolested shot, no hand up at all. Greer falls, and Goo had thrown into traffic. Snow again, and this time it's Thomas with the offensive board. The cutter, and Snow has back-to-back -back buckets. Raiders done a nice job of battling there on the offensive glass. You give them the second and third opportunity, they're going to make more. Well, everybody is crashing. All those black jerseys. Rutgers' defense this season, they're trying to institu institute a little more press. Greer. Lost it, Jallo saves. Daniels just off the rim. Swatted out. And it was last touched by Azaro. Don't notice any real issue with the 30 second clock, do you? Uh, you know, they're getting it up in plenty of time. Both teams looking to have that up-tempo offense. Uh, it seems like an easy transition for most players. Remember the NIT tournament just a few months back to finish off the 2015 season. They experimented with that 30-second clock. Some teams already had their chance at it before the start of this year. And it's just to speed up play. Speed up play, create more offense. Yeah, they say the offense had gone down to an average of about 60 points. Newark by four. Williams in and out. Lewis got his hand in, and it's going to stick with the Knights on this end of the floor. When we return, Rutgers-Newark giving the Knights a battle on opening night. Rutgers Newark with the early edge late in the first half. It's been Jordan McDaniel, it's been John Snow, and there is the senior lighting it up from downtown. This is a fast offense on opening night. Well, Newark Raiders shooting 50% both from uh, beyond the arc and from the field. Rutgers struggling beyond the arc, one for seven. Mike Williams 0 for 4. He's trying to shake that bug with that shot. That certainly doesn't help him. You don't want that sitting in his mind here. So he needs to get one to drop. Well, Eddie Jordan talks about it all throughout the preseason. We don't want expectations. And there's the first three. Well, I like that. I was just going to say, Goode was in there, and hadn't gotten a shot off. But when he finally did, he made it. Nice play by Goode. Singh, trying to put it high off the glass. Azaro, that shot swatted away. Lewis, he's the fifth-year senior. Running the floor, Williams hangs and finishes. Good job, kept his dribble, did not give up his dribble. Saw the defender just slow up for a second, then turned on the burners, did a nice job of going to the glass that time. 
It's a little less pressure on Williams as well this year offensively. He can really rely on the shot as opposed to bringing the ball up as much as he did last year. As the row. Nice play there, a little jump hook inside, tough to defend, uses his body very well. Azaro, 55% from the field last season. Williams steps into a three and connects. Like that, he needs that to help a little bit now. Two good perimeter shots in a row, and that can certainly spark an offense. And now Williams with seven. And officials call time for just a moment to wipe up some liquid on the floor. But this is just a confident stroke. Gives Rutgers a chance to get into their press here. Worked a lot on the press in practice. Williams ties up Snow. Even though they had gotten beyond the press, got it into the front court, Rutgers defense stayed with it, didn't quit. Oh, that's the second half. You can break the press, but you've got to maintain control once you get past midcourt. So the Scarlet Knights back in front. That Williams three gives them First lead of the ball game. 2.20 left in the first half. Lewis hosting, and they call an offensive foul. They dumped it in looking for a little split of the post. Williams and Goode were going to split the post, just a little slow in executing that. Well, credit David Azzaro. He scored the previous bucket on the defensive end. Gives Lewis a fit. Third personal foul on Greg, so he's back on the bench. And Greer checks in. Williams on McDaniel. A little bit of room and a whistle. Small lineup in there right now. Borman has to defend the paint inside. That's what he tried to do and picked up that foul. You know, right now, Foreman occupies that five slot, and Greer, who's a good shooter, he kind of slides down to the four. Plenty of options this season for the Scarlet Knights. <laughs> a little steal by, <laughs> by Mike Williams. Trying to pad the stats. <laughs> Uh, Mike Will just made it into the lane. A little confusion there. Who's bringing the ball in? Slow it down, bringing it up. When you substitute it like that, and guys in, in some different positions, not quite sure what they're doing. Foreman. Daniels has the pocket pick. This is Ofrey, and Williams strips it right back. Now they run the floor. Foreman, yes. Then he looked like he was going to pass the basket that time. Nice athletic move to reach back and put it up. Oh, he is more aggressive this season. He's been taking the ball to the basket in practice a bit more. That's what his coaches want. Great sleight of hand there from Williams. He's been very good at getting to the basket. His problem has been making the right choices and finishing. He's doing that so far. Foreman last year, he played in every game. Average about 15 minutes a night this year. That workload that made close to double. Rutgers showing that zone defense again, but Raiders getting inside. 2-3 zone. And the whistle on Jallo. So two free throws coming for Azaro. Four point ball game. Guys like Williams and Daniels who are on the floor, the two guards right now, their minutes are gonna go up in Eddie Jordan's third year. Miles Mack, Kadeem Jack, they're both gone. Two excellent players graduated. Eddie said it so many times before the start of this season, I have no predictions for this team. We're not going to make any gaudy predictions. Well, with seven newcomers, pretty hard till you see what they do. Confident stroke. Jallo, he goes tumbling. Going to get right back up. 
And the whistle goes against the Raiders. You saw it, it looked like McDaniel. He stuck out the backside there. Jallo gets the call. Yeah, that was pretty uh, scary there. So both teams in the bonus. Jallo a good start. And the first half, he's got eight points. Stick, he's four of four from the field. He wouldn't have come into this game and say he's going to be your leading scorer at halftime, but doing very well. Just got to make those foul shots. The big guys get to the line more, and they got to finish them. Snow and Ofre in the backcourt for the Raiders. Singh lost the dribble and still finishes. Got he went right in. at Jalo. And Rutgers stayed with that defense, too. Mike was right with him. The turnover, Singh running the floor, and Williams with the foul. So two free throws coming up inside 30 seconds until halftime. That's 12 turnovers for Rutgers. They're 13th there. Oh, well, the unit on the floor right now, players like Greer and Jallo, there's a couple guys that they didn't play last season or play here. For Rutgers, seven different players on the roster this year either didn't play or played elsewhere, not in a Rutgers uniform. Interesting collection of newcomers, if you will. And that you, takes a while for them to learn to play together. A few transfers, a couple of the red shirts from last year, like Jallo. Remember, we have Freeman, the junior college transfer. Everybody's waiting to see him. They'll see him in the second half. Eddie sat in the first half for violation of team rules. And, of course, Corey Sanders, a uh, true freshman, on yeah. the bench also sitting out of game. And a timeout taken. Now you said it, Freeman, excellent junior college prospect. Top 20 in the country, average 20 points a game. You can see him in the back there. He's got the long hair. So they add that to the rotation, but he's a dynamic player that Jordan and the coaching staff, they're excited to see play. Twenty-two seconds left in the first half, and we're all tied up. Season opener, Rutgers got a pretty interesting non-conference schedule. They open up against the Raiders tonight, home against Howard on Sunday, and then it's the old Big East rivalry. They take on St. John's next week. Head out to Las Vegas for a couple games. Seton Hall, as always, on December 5th. Take on Wake Forest to the ACC Big Ten Challenge. We're going to learn a bit about this team in the non-conference. Got a good end to GW. GW program mm -hmm. really is taking a step up. Well, Rutgers fell to GW season opener last year. Trying to come out with a win to open up 2015. Breer with a big hand in his face. Sing about 50 feet. It was close. We go to halftime, tied at 33. He's probably the biggest key that you pointed out. Got to take care of the ball a little bit in the second half. Yeah, he's throwing it away too much and allowing on defense a little bit too much penetration. Uh, leading score for Rutgers after one, Ibrahim Jallo, And for the Raiders, 13 points for Jordan McDaniel, all conference last year in the NJAC. Two teams that play fast were knotted up after one. Stay tuned. Second half begins in just a bit.
Back inside the Lewis Brown Athletic Center opening night for the Scarlet Knights and the Rutgers Newark Scarlet Raiders. And we've got a tie score after 20 minutes along with the former Rutgers head coach, Dick Lloyd, Kevin Fitzgerald. It's a scrappy bunch uh, out in Newark this season. What stood out to you the first 20 minutes of this game? Well, I think Rutgers did a good job rebounding. They did a good job fast break, particularly early on. They got 10 fast break points, but where they really got hurt were the turnovers. The ball handling was just too sloppy. It was 12 turnovers. You can't win games turning the ball over in the first half 12 times unless the second half you don't turn it over at all. Three-point shooting, which was uh, is it going to be a factor or the coach wants it to be a factor, uh, left a little bit to be desired in that first half. And I think defensively they just allowed a little bit too much penetration. The couple times they did use the press, it looked pretty good, and uh, that could be something that will help them open it up in the second half. Uh, 18 points in the paint, though, is too much for the Raiders to get. You saw that number, 10 three-pointers taken already for the Scarlet Knights. And uh, while Eddie Jordan has said, hey, we're going to try to take as many threes as we can. Now let's go downstairs with Ryan Farrell. Thanks, Kevin. The Scarlet Knights need to do a better job of stopping Jordan McDaniel. He had 13 points in that first half, and he did all he could to get to the rim. The Scarlet Knights defense was not stopping them. For offense, well, they need to do a better job of getting it in the low post to guys like Lewis and Giallo. That'll open up the three-point perimeter shot for guys like Mike Williams. And if they can do that, maybe they can run away with this game. Back to you, Kevin. I think that post option is, is certainly the way to go, try to work it down low. And and the new offense for Eddie Jordan, it's faster, there's more cuts, there's a little more motion. It's trying to be more inside out. Get it inside and, and see what comes of that. Yeah, the first half it was a little bit too much outside and they never got it inside to test that at all. And it's not unusual. They knew that Snow and McDaniels were the leading returning scorers. Snow two years ago sat out last year with the injury, averaged 16 points, and McDaniels averaged 16 points also, so you just got to D up a little bit better than Rutgers did in that first half. Those two guys are probably first team all conference in the NJAC. So uh, we're going to get our first look at Deshaun Freeman. He's wearing number 33 in white. Violated a team rule, missed the first half, and there he is. He's guarding Azaro, the junior college transfer, a top 20 Juco recruit. Ofre, he's taken it to the rim a bunch. Williams clears it. Splits two. On rebound, and he finishes. Good play to start the second half. Well, they had all the guys running the floor that time. Also, notice that uh, Good is still in there. And again, if he can get loose and get some shots, that can open the game up a little bit. It's also Bishop Daniels, DJ Foreman. He finish out the unit that starts the second half. McDaniels cuts, and the pass tipped away. That's twice for Williams. He's running the floor again. Good in for the offensive rebound. And Daniels to reset. Good there. got it under there. It looked like he wanted to go up with her. He said, no, too many big guys here. There's Daniels, and McDaniel is there to block that one away. He just touched on it a moment ago, running the floor. And the Knights do it that time as well. They'll take it underneath the hoop. Thought they did a good job defensively, uh, the Scarlet Knights, in taking away the pick and roll. Last couple minutes. There Williams for three. There you go. You can play. He's really, you can tell he's come out to play this second half. Couple of nice defensive moves leading the break and now making that shot. And a timeout taken by Joe Lockrid. Rutgers starts the second half on a 5-0 run, starting to heat up.
Rutgers on a 5-0 run out of the gate in the second half. Looking back at last season, the offense left a little bit to be desired. Finished last in the Big Ten in points per game, field goal percentage. But early in the second half, not only hitting from outside, crashing the boards, doing a little bit of everything on the offensive side. Well, I think Mike Williams led that charge. He got a nice steal, led the break down, missed his shot, but got his own rebound and put it back for his first bucket. Then he was deep in the right-hand corner and got a three-point shot to drop. So he added uh, a nice five points for Rutgers. Williams, although just a sophomore, he may be asked to step up like guys like Bishop Daniels and Greg Lewis as the seniors on this team. He's one of the top returners. Excellent move to the rim from McDaniel. Boy, what a nice baseline drive. Freeman gave him the half step and got caught behind. Well, head coach Joe Lochran thinks he could be conference player of the year. That's Jordan McDaniel from Colonia, New Jersey. There's Deshaun Freeman. Spin in the lane. Good wingspan, kept that one alive, and Foreman, he gets two. Well, that nice intensity by Foreman, trying to force the issue a little bit too much, I think, Freeman that time, but Foreman was there to bail him out and get the rebound, put it back. And there's the hand check on Freeman. That's his first foul. Nice offensive rebound, and Freeman set himself before the bucket. McDaniels inbounds. John Snow, double figures in the first half. Short got it back. Out to Daniels, and now he can run. Williams, nice play. Well, that was nicely done. It was a very good pass, and it was handled very well by Williams that time, and he was able to finish. All of a sudden, Mike Williams with 14. Williams from Brooklyn. Great shooter in high school, one of the best in New York City. McDaniel, short. And they didn't box him out. You got a size advantage on the team. You certainly don't want to give him that second opportunity. Oh, nicely done. Nice and drive. And the foul. Nice drive, nice layout with the right hand from the left side. Jordan McDaniel. And how much Jallo could do there. McDaniel has the long wingspan. He's a very much improved ball handler this year. That's one reason why he can take it to the rim. Well, Newark hanging around. Williams sets the feet. Loose ball foul, and this one's going to go against the Scarlet Raiders. Again, an opportunity there in that offense. There was a duck in and a nice low post position, but they didn't look to get it inside. They were content to pass it on the perimeter. Now spacing always the key. You just saw Eddie Jordan, Princeton offense is what he brought here a couple seasons ago. It's all about spacing. Tries to mimic his offense off of the San Antonio Spurs' look. And there's Freeman's first bucket. That was a very nice move. That offense was started by the Spurs, but a lot of other teams have adopted it too because it's pretty simple. You know, you're throwing ahead, you're cutting through, you're posting up, but you got to look inside. Deshaun Freeman last year at Hutchinson Community College in Kansas. About 20 points per game, close to 10 rebounds a game. He puts Rutgers up seven. Rutgers now showing a little different press, just three-quarter court. And Snow is fouled. Uh, Good let his man drive baseline and Jallo picked up that foul because of that. Oh, 
That's four on Jallo, third on the team in the second half. Greg Lewis set to come in. He's got three fouls. Lewis, he only played seven minutes in the first half. Like you said, a few too many whistles early. Snow, very good free throw shooter. Misses this one. Daniels from Raleigh, North Carolina. Second year at Rutgers, gives way to Goode. Williams unselfish. And Lewis well short, but Williams, the offensive board and the putback. Boy, Mike is taking control here for the offense. They did get it inside, but that time Greg Lewis stepped up and faced the basket. His shot was a little short, but Williams there, get that rebound and the putback. How about the speed for Williams? He's all over the place. He's covering a lot of ground. Thomas short, Lewis got a piece of the second. And then that's not a smart foul from Thomas, he reaches in. And the Knights will benefit when we come back. Played four and a half into the second half of play. Rutgers with an eight point lead. Ibrahima Jallo, he's the redshirt freshman from Senegal. He's got eight points, a good first half. Well, he sat out last year. You can take a look at his ranking coming out of high school. Had a great season two years ago at Quality Education Academy down in North Carolina. I think he averaged 13 points, 15 rebounds, and five blocks. He's known for that long wingspan. Today he's doing it on the offensive end as well. And he's had the opportunity to practice for the full year, so he's uh, doing a very good job out here now. How about Mike Williams, though, with four field goals, one of three. He's really given some life to the offense. 16 points for Williams, the sophomore from Brooklyn. And Bishop Daniels, he played a season Right near Williams' parts, ASA College. Came to Rutgers last year. There's a foul in the paint. And there you go. There's the physicality from Freeman. He's going to make you work to get position yep. on him. Freeman and Thomas really going at it. Freeman trying to get that low post position. Thomas fighting him. Now you look at this Rutgers unit from top to bottom. Greg Lewis. Brought his name up previously. He's really the only holdover from the previous coaching regime when Mike Rice was here. Everybody else has been brought in by Eddie Jordan and company. Seems like every player we bring up, maybe they started somewhere else, and they're now here. A lot of new faces. Too strong. Rebound to Lunsford. Friedman didn't wait long to get that shot up. Maybe rushed that one, forced that one a little bit. Had to sit out the first half. Snow doesn't use the screen. Out to Sing. That one's way off. And Goo, there's his versatility. He can rebound a bit. Daniels short. Oh, Freeman had it. 
and fumbled it. Ball back to the Raiders. Good work pretty hard on defense, too. Got away with using his hands a little bit and then fought really hard to get that rebound. Seven of the 15 players on Rutgers' roster this year that either weren't in a Rutgers uniform or didn't play last year. Remember, got a transfer from Kansas State, Nigel Johnson. Spent the last two years out in Manhattan. And there's an offensive foul. That one goes against Snow. Hounding pressure from Williams. You bring up Nigel Johnson. The coach is very, very high on him. Think he he can add a great deal to this team, but he won't be able to do it till next year. Has to sit out a year. Now he'll have two seasons. Talk about the athleticism from this team. Johnson, you watch him in practice. He can put on a dunk contest just on his own. Another foul on Lunsford. Well, they got it inside the low post that time and a nice pump fake and then around the baseline, ready to go up strong. Well, now the star, Jordan McDaniel, comes back in for the Raiders. He's at double figures with 15. Williams leads everybody. He's got the ball now with 16. Opening night, Rutgers trying to win the opener. Over their counterparts from up in Newark, the Raiders. And I... Great work outside the perimeter there. Sloppy ball handling there. Can't afford to do that. Twelve turnovers for Rutgers in the first half. They've cleaned that up throughout the first six-plus minutes of the second. Got to watch Snow. He's got that first quick dribble. Wow, excellent move. That's a great move. Mike Williams on him. Mike Williams on the best perimeter defenders, but... Had trouble that time. Boy, Allen Iverson used to put it high off the glass in snow. Right over two defenders. Daniels is open. Too far. Williams fighting. McDaniels strips it right away. And that one's a clean block. Daniels. Now he's pushing the floor. And wisely slows it down. Back and forth. One steal, then a block. Well, the Newark sideline, they thought that one was pinned off the backboard. Yeah, it did look like it came off the board. May have been below the rim, though. Laurent back in, but he travels. And the freshman from Orlando, Florida. He gives it away. Let's take a look. Mm, yeah, that one hit the rim. That one hit the backboard, rather. <laughs> the Knights get away with one. Yes, they did. It was above the rim. And that sideline that you see there, head coach Joe Locker, they went nuts. Rutgers showing some zone. On the baseline, McDaniel lost the handle. Daniel is great at attacking the rim. This time slows it to Laurent. He's the three-point shooter. Too strong. Lewis, offensive foul. That'll be Greg's fourth also. Used a little pump fake inside, but then jumped into the defender. He's talking about basketball IQ. You've seen that a couple times right outside the semicircle. Newark has been in great positions to take those charges. And so Greer comes back in. Both teams shooting very well. They were both above 50% in the first half. Two offenses that we've seen like to work fast, a lot of motion. And the Raiders have done an excellent job today of driving to the rim. Rutgers zone keeping them on the perimeter. Eight on the shot clock. And Singh stepped out. That was a good defensive set by Rutgers that time. Two, three, very active, very active with the hands. Kept them totally on the perimeter. They throw that zone look out there a couple times. Usually go to about two sets with it, and then he goes back to man to man. If you're going to attack the two, three, you got to attack it inside. You can't beat it from the perimeter. It's Eddie Jordan's defense He's trying to lead Rutgers. It's first winning season in 10 years. 
It looks like uh, Newark has changed their defense. Greer got it from downtown, and it's a nine-point lead. He had a hand in his face, too, but kept his focus and nailed it. Greer, he grew up in Camden County. Started his collegiate career at Florida Atlantic, then transferred to Bradley. His good friend, Al Fisher, he played for his head coach, Gino Ford, and said he's a great guy. Go out to Bradley. And a foul. It's going to result in a couple free throws. Scarlet Knights with its largest lead of the evening on opening night here inside the rack. Tied at halftime, now the Scarlet Knights have their largest lead of the evening. And thanks in large part to Mike Williams, he started to heat up in the second half. Well, he's done a good job. He's leading Rutgers in scoring with 16. He's also leading Rutgers in rebound. He's done a nice job this second half, picking the ball up the floor and then going right back up with it. Now Williams has improved his shot this season. He averaged just a little over six points a game last year. Started 11 games. He was in and out of that starting rotation. But this season, he seems much more comfortable. Confidence is the key with Williams, just the sophomore. Was well, shooting seven for 16, two for seven from three point range, but, and seven rebounds, as we said, he leads in rebounds. He also has three assists. I don't think Coach Jordan will mind at all if Williams takes that many shots. He's got a good outside shot. So it's Daniels, Williams, Freeman, Greer, and Laurent. Daniels back out. Williams, too strong. And Ofrey, he's the 6'1 sophomore with the rebound for Newark. John Snow, down and out, and Williams got it. Well, Raiders have changed their defense. They're playing their version of a 2-3. Freeman lost it, got it back, two more. Nice spin move along the baseline. As you said, he lost it, but he picked it up again. Got it inside, down low against the 2-3 zone. Freeman had some offers from Tennessee, Arizona State, Virginia Tech was looking at him really hard, chose Rutgers. He hails from North Carolina. Ball is loose, and Laurent couldn't stop it. He'll stick with the Raiders. DJ Foreman back in along with Justin Goove. Rutgers by nine, season opener. Lost last year's opener to GW. And trying to start off the 15-16 season on the right front. Whistle. And it looks like contact. 
Coach Jordan wanted to walk before the foul. Well, who had the great first half? It was Ibrahim Ajalo. So, if you guys know who the last player from Senegal was to wear the Rutgers uniform. And the hit for you now plays in the Israeli League. And was an electric shot blocker when he played a number of years ago. Big East Defensive Player of the Year, his senior season. And what a nice person. What a nice individual. Nice young man. Oh, do you see a little Enjai and Ibrahima Jalo? Yeah, find your shooters. Even if you give Goode a little bit of space, he'll take it. Freeman. Foreman, rather, almost had the reverse. Snow hesitation. Can't get the second to go. Good pressure. Greer to the rim. He's got two shots. That's a nice outlet pass right away. Look up the floor, get it down. Well, that's the defense creating the breakout there. You know, last season, yes, Rutgers lost 16 games in conference. The 17th was Big Ten tournament game, but more than half of those games were played within 10 points. And they had a in most of those conference games a year ago. And now Jordan thinks the key is you know, if we intensify a bit on defense, we're going to be able to drive the pace of games. And that of may cause some wins. League's going to be as strong as ever. I think it's uh, six in the preseason AP poll, the most of any conference. I mean, it is a tough league. Well, you've probably got two of the most heralded freshmen in the class of 2015 that are playing in the Big Ten. That foul on Greer. That's his first. Got Diamond Stone. He'll wear the Terrapins uniform this season. I think they were picked three, so probably top of the Big Ten schools in the AP poll. Caleb Swanigan, he's going to play a huge factor in a Purdue's season this year. They're ranked 23rd. Williams <laughs> saved it but gave it away, and yeah. it's an over and back. McDaniel, he established the foot across the line and then pivoted backwards. Rutgers by 10. And with possession. Less than nine to go in this one. Foreman and one. Give that assist to Williams. What a nice job. He saw that zone open up a little bit through the pass inside. To, was that Foreman? And he came up with that nice dunk. Nice strong move and got fouled. Ten points and Lunsford tried to alter the shot. Nothing doing. Sophomore from Spring Valley, New York. Can't complete the conventional three-point play. Here come the Raiders. Well, it's a 12-point game. Block, Freeman. Up ahead to Williams, running the floor well, and two more. Very nicely done. Again, it's Mike Williams and Freeman adding to that. Well, we said at the break, let's see what type of impact Deshaun Freeman can make on the defensive side. He's wreaked some havoc. The block on one end. And it leads to the fast break points for Rutgers. Up 14.
Season opener for the Scarlet Knights, a 14-point lead. Kevin Fitzgerald here with the Hall of Famer Dick Lloyd, and let's bring in the third member of our crew, Ryan Farrell. Yeah, thanks, Kevin. I mean, Mike Williams is really taking control of this game. Not only does he have 18 points and running the offense, he's crashing the boards with 11 rebounds, and there's still 8 minutes and 20 seconds left in this game. Some of these big guys should get with Williams and find out how he's doing such a good job boxing out. Back to you, Kevin. He's, he's got a double-double. You said it. And Dick, just active, he's all over the place. Well, he's playing with a lot of intensity, and you know, you make a couple buckets, and that leads to that intensity. He's been very good inside, picking the ball up off the floor and putting it right back up or finding the open guy, and it was a heck of a pass he threw when that zone opened up right in the middle. He found the seam and got it inside to Foreman, and then Foreman made that great dunk. I think confidence is the word that's been thrown out around Williams. As long as the confidence is up there this year, the sky is really the limit. Raiders trying to stop the bleeding. It was tied in half. And now the Knights up 14. Snow has just been neutralized here in the second half, and Williams thought he had the block. It's dead, the foul. He wanted to add some defense to his offensive end. Did a nice job of moving his feet, staying with the dribbler. That was close. And Williams, they say, just leaned in. So John Snow, 12 points. Most of that in the first half. Well, if you're a fan of Game of Thrones, John Snow is certainly going to have a long season. <laughs> I think I've missed Game of Thrones. <laughs> Well, the name like that, I don't know if Snow can afford to. 13-point game. Tic-tac-toe. Got it and the foul. Nicely done. Got it to that short corner against that 2-3 along the baseline, and then it was... Freeman gone down the gut and a nice pass to him and then laying it up. Well, have things look like they've loosened up a bit for this offense in the second half? Well, I think the fact they're attacking the zone again, they're opening that up and getting it inside has really been helpful. Freeman didn't play in the first half. He has seven points. Got to remember, we talked about how Shaq Dorsett Suffered that left foot injury in preseason practice. He's out indefinitely. Could be a lengthy amount of time, but remember who this team gets back on Sunday. It's Corey Sanders, top 75 freshman in the class of 2015. Sing with the spin, can't finish. Williams starts the break. This team running. Greer tries it for three, and Freeman keeps it alive. Up and under, that swirls in. Well, he showed these people what he can do there. Stayed with the ball, bouncing it in the corner, and then went right to the hole and had a creative shot to finish it. Ofre's shot altered. Ball still loose. And Raiders stepped out of bounds. Freeman was down there the other end, too, doing a good job of intimidating. Freeman very active, averaged close to 20 points a game last year at Hutchinson Community College. Good, the find, and the slam. Very nicely done, and Goo gave up that shot. A little pump fake, might have had that shot, but found a guy who was in a better position for it. Timeout taken by Joe Lochran. Oh, well, Freeman from Hutchinson Community College. You want to know where that is? It's out in Kansas. It's about an hour northwest of Wichita. Now, he had some good looks coming out of high school. He tore the meniscus in his right knee his senior season, lost a lot of those potential chances to go play D1, went the Juco route. And he could have himself set up nicely here for the next couple of years. Hutchinson is a perennial power for years they've been a very tough 
community college program. Well, that's been the way this team has been assembled this year. Not only Freeman, but player like Omari Greer comes in for a fifth season. Nigel Johnson after two years at Kansas State. He'll sit out this year and will have two years of eligibility for this Rutgers team. And there is, you can see, right outside the huddle, Nigel and Corey Sanders. Jordan talked about how those two, they push each other. They have fun on and off the court, both competitive. And they're a fun pair to watch in practice, aren't they? Yes, they are. They go against each other, and they're pretty tough. Both just so creative with what they can do with the ball and such quickness, it makes it really tough for them to stop each other. So Sanders, he was a four-star recruit out of Lakeland, Florida. USA Today tabs him the most entertaining prospect in the class of 2015. A lot of that has to do with because of his highlight dunks. I meant to ask the coach if he had any policies on the uh, uh, YouTube and, and uh, Facebook of his players during the season, but have you seen the one of his dunk on YouTube where he puts that seven foot six player in front of the bucket and then he just straddles and dunks the ball? I mean, that is unbelievable. Taco Fall, the tallest high school basketball player. Seven six. <laughs> And he was down in Florida for a dunk contest before Sanders got here. Leaps over the 7-6 forward. And Taco Fall, he's probably the most nervous. Sanders will be in action on Sunday. That'll be his first game. Foreman just off his fingertips and into the first row. He was heading down the other end pretty oh, quickly. But yeah. Rutgers did a good job in the zone, trapping in the corner. He had a full head of steam all the way up the court. Just forgot the ball. Foreman a nice night. He has 10 points. Nineteen points, that's the largest lead for Rutgers this evening. Azzaro, a nice eight footer. And actually done went to the elbow from the opposite side, just flashed to that elbow. They hit him, turn and face, unmolested shot. You now Scarlet Raiders from Newark. They're a much smaller team. This is how we essentially envisioned this one. They kept it closed for about twenty-five minutes. Tied at halftime at a lead. The majority of the first half. Foreman the spin, and he stepped on the out-of-bounds line. Maybe trying to do too much before you make that move. Look on your perimeter. Find some of your shooters out there. See if Mike Williams is covered. What's happening with uh, Justin Good? Rutgers seems to have their basic defense now, the 2-3. Trapping if it goes in the corner. There is the trap. Azzaro gets the shot off beforehand. Foreman. So here's that unit for Williams where he'll run the point. It's primarily going to be Bishop Daniels and Sanders when he comes back. Williams ran a little bit of the point last year. Freeman off the backboard. That was nicely done, too, attacking the defense extremely well. Just down the gut. You're on the high post. You just drop right down the lane. With Dorson injured, Freeman and Foreman just to his right. They're going to be asked to play bigger at times in the non-conference. And there's a big block. Sticks with the Raiders. Rutgers, Newark, their season officially opens up on the road against Hunter College this upcoming Tuesday. Division three, part of the New Jersey Athletic Conference. Again, 19 wins last season. This is preseason number two in the NJAC. And this is a formidable early challenge for the Knights. And good, frustrated, but just caught the shooting arm of and John Snow. Justin does like to use his hands on defense a little bit. There is Joe Lockrid. 15 years on the sidelines. 
This was a program that wasn't much when he got here. He credits a lot of the transformation to Chris Casey, who was the head coach just before him. He's now the head coach at Niagara up near Buffalo. The basketball arena is greatly improved. As Joe says, we went from a rubber floor to now your typical wooden floor. The, the bleacher seats, those wooden bleacher seats have now been replaced with chair back seats. So they've got one of the nicer venues really in Division Three. They do. Saw a picture of that when we were doing our research, and I've been up that campus many times in that Golden Dome many, many times. These guys three years removed from an NCAA tournament appearance and poised to make a run this year. Career. No, the follow stripped away. Singh got the hand, and he takes it up. Olfrey fakes. Singh is open. Short, Freeman the board. A penetrating dish offense, having the guy in the three-point range going inside. You can't get it kicked to the three-point line. They hit a few triples in the first half, but the shooting numbers have gone cold for Newark in the second. Good, nice pull up. <laughs> I'll tell you what, doesn't take a lot of shots, but when he takes them, he makes them. How about Justin Good from Roanoke, Virginia? He said, the Rutgers coaches, they didn't even watch me in a game. They came to one practice, saw another, and then offered. All you have to do is watch him shoot. He doesn't have to play a game, doesn't have to practice. Just watch him stand and shoot. And that one right to him. Here's a three on one. They get three on two. But the foul. And Rutgers has it when that, we return. That three on two was stopping at the foul line, which he didn't do. Justin took it all the way in that time. 20 point lead on opening night. The Scarlet Knights try to close it out. When we come back. Back inside the rack with Dick Lloyd. I'm Kevin Fitzgerald. Rutgers with a big lead. They were tied at half. They stretched it to 20. Deshaun Freeman into the lineup for the second half. What extra dimension does he add to the offense this year, the Juco transfer? Well, he adds a much stronger person on the board, a guy that can move around inside. He's just not going to stay on the block. He's got good movement. He can turn and face, and he goes up strong. He's going to take you up with him. 13 points. Remember, he only played one half. He's six for eight from the field, one for two from the line, and four rebounds. So he really has come in giving this team a little bit of a spark inside. Well, Freeman from Hutchinson Community College. He was a Blue Dragon the last couple seasons. He talked about how strong that basketball program is. There have been plenty of caliber players that have made that jump from that school to D1. How about Darius Johnson, Odom? Very solid player at Marquette a number of seasons ago. He started at Hutchinson and then transferred. And Freeman trying to be that next big name. Offensive foul. McDaniel went with the right arm. To Freeman down there, he was looking ready to block. He gives you some defense in there. Look at him hanging in the lane ready to block if they got by Foreman and Jonathan Laurent he takes the charge 
And it looks like that is McDaniel's fifth foul. So he's out of this game after 18, after scoring 18 points. He's 7 of 13 from the line. Make sure to join us on Sunday as well. Rutgers hosts Howard. First two games, opening weekend of college basketball. I know you're excited. Hoop season is back around. They're on the road against St. John's. It'll be a nice old Big East matchup. Howard could be a little bit of a challenge for Rutgers. They're in the Mideast Athletic Conference. Returned four starters. They were 16 and 16 last year. Dadica out of control. Offensive foul. He just checked in. Yeah, Howard went to their conference championship game last season. 10th team foul on Rutgers. Two free throws the rest of the way for Newark, but with inside three minutes, Scarlet Knights, great hold on this one on opening night. Well, Big Ten preseason rankings. He selected Rutgers 14th, last in the conference. We've seen, though, plenty of physicality, versatility on both sides of the ball tonight. A lot of flexibility, a lot of guys to rotate in. He essentially could go 10 deep on this team. You get Sanders back. And the foul for Azaro. He's been working hard underneath today for the Raiders. Freeman that time called for the foul. That he was looking for the block, not the good defensive position. Got to move with your feet. See how he moved to the side there. and as He was looking to block it. Oh, he comes off. Nice round of applause from the audience tonight. Jallo back in at a solid first half. Azaro with the three-point play. Scarlet Knights, their non-conference tournament. They're going to be out in Las Vegas. They'll play Creighton. And then either Clemson or UMass. That's going to be Thanksgiving week. Danica passes, drives, and finishes. He's playing with a little intensity out there. I'm sure his dad is uh, proud of that. His dad, Ricky Danica, one of uh, Rutgers' better guards. Local kid from Spotswood, New Jersey. And he's hounding Jon Snow. Laurent steps up and another foul. Well, they'll say goaltending, count the bucket. And this is going to be one free throw for Ezero. Jello had four fouls, just picked up too many. Lewis, four fouls, got to watch that. And in comes Jalen Hyde for the Knights. Another local guy from Franklin Township, just one town over. And he's the senior. You probably use the best word, just a lot of flexibility with this unit. That is going to be the strength. Good, steps into a three. Off the mark, rebound, Ulfren. As a row, they go back to him. That was and he's in double figures. Nicely done, get it inside. He had good position down low. They worked so hard to get that position, you gotta get him the ball. Rutgers, Newark. Just one win in this series against their Division I brothers. They fought very hard today. Jallo, they'll have a chance at two more with 1-10 to go in this game. Not a bad move along the baseline. Found himself on the wrong side of the basket. Tried to spin back, got fouled. And the Raiders, like we talked about, they'll be on the road. Their first home game of the season doesn't come until Thanksgiving week. They'll play an 18 game NJAC conference schedule. 10 teams in that league, all New Jersey, including Rutgers Camden. Mm -hmm. 
Joe Lochran, 224 wins, his head coach in 15 years. He's really established a program there. Play very disciplined. He's got seven new freshmen. You saw a few of them tonight, so both of these teams similar in the sense they're breaking in some new players. Preseason number two in their conference. They'll be just fine this year. Ofrey lost it on the way up. And the block for Jallo. Starts the breakout for Hyde. Goes in, offensive foul. And 43.2 left. Oh, just look at the wingspan here. Just send it right back. Just has to be careful. He blocks are good, but don't pick up those fouls. Not going to help on the bench. As a row, he has a dozen. Yeah, first half. There were some turnovers, there were some fouls. The second half, though, a little bit faster pace for this Rutgers offense, which is what Eddie Jordan wants. About 20 seconds left in this one. And Jallo down and out. It's, it's a very difficult Big Ten conference. You brought it up this year, six teams in the preseason top 25 rankings. Third year for Eddie Jordan. He's brought in some athletic players. We talked about the fact seven newcomers. Takes a while for that to become a unit for them to fit in, particularly with a, a change in the offense as he did this year. So even the guys who were here last year have to learn a little bit new offense. That first conference game for a lot of these newcomers, they're going to be Taking on the Hoosiers from Indiana on December 30th. That's the first one. Ranked 15th in the country. And the Scarlet Knights open up the 2015-2016 season with a victory. They race past the Scarlet Raiders in the second half. 72-59 the final. And contributions from all over the lineup, top to bottom. It was Mike Williams who had the nice showing today, 18 points. Yeah, Mike really came in the second half to play, did a good job of finding open guys, but also scoring some buckets, rebounding, picking the ball up off the ground and going straight up. And, of course, uh, Freeman, Deshaun Freeman, who was sitting the first half because he violated some team rules, so his penalty was to sit that first half. Well, he came in the second half, and he made a much stronger inside and along that baseline. Rutgers 1-0 on the season. Rutgers Newark officially opens up their season on Tuesday. Be sure to join us this Sunday when Rutgers hosts Howard's second game of the season for my broadcast partner Dick Lloyd and director Jack Zulo. I'm Kevin Fitzgerald saying so long from the Lewis Brown Athletic Center. 72-59. Rutgers starts the season 1-0. This has been a presentation of the Big Ten Network.